All right, welcome back to Fleck and Socks, the podcast, episode one, two, three. Today on the show, we have a debate and an election recap you're not going to want to miss. Then, in Cringe of the Week, anti-white sentiment continues to grow as people are blaming colonizers for everything. Then, there's a new dumb trend where people are getting tattoos of freckles to their face and regretting it immediately after. And last but not least, we have some stories about repeat offenders killing people that will make your blood boil. Real Gotham City-ish. All this and more, it's Fuckus Talks the Podcast, episode 123, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than actions because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. Fuck the Stocks Podcast featuring Richard Grab. All right, one for one on the intro as always. This week's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Leisure Carry. Guys, do you like to carry a firearm pretty much everywhere you go, but have a hard time concealing it when you're wearing comfortable clothes like sweatpants or basketball shorts? Well, do I have a solution for you? It's the clip on belt from Leisure Carry. The Leisure Carry clip-on belt allows you to carry no matter what you're wearing without needing to add extra bags or uncomfortable contraptions. It adds the structure you need with no sagging, no dragging, and no print. And best of all, it's made in America with the highest quality materials. It's time to unlock the rest of your wardrobe with the Leisure Carry clip-on belt. Go to leisurecarry.com today. They even make a special Fluckus Talks the Podcast version if you guys are interested in that. LeisureCarry.com is the website. Use code FLECKUS10 for 10% off site-wide. It's made in America. You guys like to carry and they're show watchers. It's a full 360 win. LeisureCarry.com is the website. Go there today. It's linked in the description. Now let's get into housekeeping. All right. Thank you to Leisure Carry. Thank you, Leisure Carry. Watchers of the show. We love Leisure Carry. Small business in Georgia. Georgia, American. We love Leisure Carry. All we right. support them. We have a lot to get to today. Uh, the debate was a couple nights ago. Uh, anyone who is watching and is normal uh, should agree that Vivek won the debate by a lot. He won it by a mile. He yeah. had that uh, comment, uh, we don't need another Dick Cheney in three-inch heels, which we have two of over here, and he pointed to DeSantis and Nikki Haley. Yeah. And then Nikki Haley responded to that with, Vivek, I wear heels. They're not for a fashion statement. They're for ammunition. I Nobody have. asked her to explain. <laughs> Nobody asked her to. No, no follow up questions were asked yeah, on that one. Literally, no idea what that means. Um, she might be a bot. Yeah, I guess so. And but, then they, and then she said it, and then they like tweeted it out from her account. Like that's right. Yeah, they doubled down. Everybody's wondering what oh, it actually means. It's a joke. You don't get it. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then uh, Chris Christie, not a serious guy. Tim Scott. Definitely a bot. Charity case. And as always, there was a lot of weird Ron DeSantis stuff going on. Yeah. And here's here's him making a weird face. Turning over data to Chinese companies. Oh my God. That transition to like scowling to, no, no, remember to smile. The consultant says, remember to smile. And he goes, oh yeah. And the problem with that situation is... Uh, people are pointing out all these like weird facial things he does. And then once you point that out, now he's hyper aware of it. And yeah. he's like someone who tends to do that already. So it's only going to get worse where it's like, don't make a weird face. Don't make a weird face. And you're kind of just like stuck going like this. Yeah. It's a, like a pitcher getting the yips. <laughs> yeah. It's it's over. You want to play this little yeah, bit? Yeah, he got the yips. So yeah, here's him trying to walk out. Just a normal guy. Yeah, he's hobbling around, looks like a circus performer with yeah. on the stilts. You know those people? Mm-hmm. Um, and then here's a picture of him next to Vivek, who's proudly 5'7". Mm-hmm. It looks like he's shorter than Vivek, and he's wearing the heels. Yeah. So. Imagine Vivek like doing next-level warfare, and war actually stuffed the shit out of his heels, knowing <laughs> this picture was coming. I'm 5'7", and he's really 5'10", <laughs> and he just completely sewers him. Yep. Um, yeah, so Vivek had a very good night. Every honest person knows that. Uh, well, Vivek, it was like he was – everybody else was coloring in the RNC coloring book, like the Overton window of what mm. Republicans can talk about. Vivek was like, all right, no, I reject <laughs> that, and then uh, you know called everybody out. So Yeah, so if you're watching, you know Vivek won. You might not like him, but he won. I, I, I don't mind him. He, he knows I'm what not to voting say. for him. He's not going to be yeah, president. Exactly. Right? Like, Out of that group, he's the best one. 
Uh, and you have to be an honest person to say that. If you're not, then you have a uh, post like this from the New York Post where they said, uh, Republican debate verdict, impressive Haley shines, stupid Vivek self-destructs. What are you talking about? <laughs> New York Times had something similar where Nikki Haley is the clear winner. It's like she warmongered for 45 minutes. So it's like almost like a tell where it's like, oh, the New York Post, the New York Times thinks Nikki Haley did great when she didn't. What does that say? Yeah, Dave That's, Rubin had a take. Yeah, Vivek is such an insufferable prick. I haven't seen someone get ratioed on his post. Like, every comment had, like, 800 likes. Like, you're way off. You're wrong. Yeah. Can't believe it. So Not even close. I don't know how he came to that conclusion. He's just not an honest guy. Yeah. That's what it is. So the whole night was about Israel and Ukraine again. China, Russia. How to give all of our money away and get our militaries involved. Even, um, nor even North Korea and Venezuela made the list. And it's yeah. like, oh, things must be fucking sick here. Yeah. We have everything so squared away here that it's like, what else can we give our resources to? Yeah, where else in America can we look? Or in the world can we yeah. look? Meanwhile, we're bleeding out like... <laughs> yeah. Fentanyl. Like, send, up, send another hundred billion. <laughs> 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 the southern border, fentanyl. Ah, ah, body shots. Yeah. And whenever I talk to rhino types and I say like, hey, we don't need to be sending more or any foreign aid to Ukraine or Israel. We shouldn't be involved. All the rhinos go, well, we can do both. Yeah. Well, America can do both. Since when? Clearly, we can't. <laughs> we can't do one. We yeah. can't do regular stuff. The border? What do you mean do both? We're bleeding out. We're done. Um, so, yeah, that was a fun debate. Vivek did a great job. Trump gave a speech. Trump won the debate. Then Vivek was second place. Debate went a little long. Yeah, two hours. I didn't care for a two-hour debate. I'm it like, all right, long. with the second, with the B team? Yeah. Let's I was, wrap it yeah. up. Chris Christie. Didn't really lean on the podium like he usually needed to. Yeah. He's got the endurance going up. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, all right. Let's get back to earlier in the week. There was an election blowout for Republicans. Yeah. Uh, everyone's trying to blame Trump when it's obviously the establishment's fault. Uh, and abortion keeps crushing us. Yeah. And I'll say this. If the goal is less abortions, we need to change up the strategy a lot. Because when we take the hardline abortion stance, it closes up the other side and they go out and just vote against that. Mm -hmm. And the Republicans go, well, I'm not going to compromise on life. And they go, OK, blown out, more abortions than ever. Every college girl got in line and says, I love abortions. Exactly. You know? And we get blown out. We lose by a lot. And there's more abortions than ever because of it. So what do you suggest? People need to kind of get red pilled on abortion over time. So for me, for example, when I was in college, I was pro-choice. I was more liberal. I didn't pay attention to politics. Not my body, not my choice. Let a woman do what she wants to do with her body. That was my mindset like 10 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then I eventually became like, okay, first trimester like they do in Europe. And now I currently am at the position of life starts at conception, no abortions, Yeah. right? But that was a process. And what brought me around? Seeing what an abortion actually looks like. Limb from limb. Exactly. So when you ask someone if they're pro-choice, like that's what Republicans should have been doing going into this election. You can ask someone, oh, are you pro-choice? Yeah, I am. OK, cool. Here's what a second trimester abortion looks like. Babies ripped apart. Clearly a dead body. A murder happened. Are you fine with that? Yeah. And they'll either go, yeah, I am fine with that. And then you go, OK, you're a sick fuck, but you're fine with it. <laughs> as long as you can be honest with yourself, you're a sick fuck. Or they'll go, no, 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 I'm not okay with that. And then you can go, well, what about what they do in Europe? That seems fair. And then they'll go, yeah, 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 15 weeks. And then by the next election, they'll probably even come around more and more and be more open to life starts at conception. Yeah. But there's like a process that society needs to go through. And if you lead with zero abortions no matter what, then they go, oh, they think that a 12-year-old who got raped by her dad – needs to have the baby and then you lose the thing. Yeah. But you have no you have no ads running that are like showing what an abortion looks like or no like on the street campaigns that kind of do that. So that's where we lost big. I think there's a sneakiness element to it as well. Like if you're a Republican and you're running in a purple state that you know the college girls are going to come out for abortion hard. It's like, you know, leave it on the back burner. Talk about the economy, talk about inflation, all that, and then when you get in, govern how you want. You yeah. know? So that's uh, a good point, too. Like that's uh, like the Democrats. Oh, we're going to forgive student loans and do this and do that. And then they come in and they immediately dump 100 billion to Ukraine. Like that's not really in the playbook, but you did it anyway. So yeah. I think Republicans need to take a page from that book. Yeah. Ronna McDaniel, anything there? 
she's a joke. She's a, a fraud, a loser. Retarded. I think we've seen enough. Uh, we've seen enough reps of elections where a red wave was supposed to happen, and Joe Biden and inflation sucks, and Chipotle is twenty dollars. Yeah, and we what we lose. And so she's like not giving money to people who need it, uh, who are running elections, running in elections. Great. Yeah. Uh, I had a dream. Oh, I had, I had a dream last night. Um, about voting machines flipping mm -hmm. votes in my dream. <laughs> the one thing they're not supposed to do, by yeah. the way. Like, that's that's what I don't get. There was uh, some headlines out of Pennsylvania about machines being down for flipping votes, and it's like the one thing they can't do: flipping, flipping vote. votes. Like, we don't need machines. We don't need algorithms. Yeah, we just need tally. How many versus how many paper? How many? How many? Add them up. But now we need. We need a we need an algorithm machine that's gonna like what we don't need adjusting yeah just tell us the numbers um, so I had a dream that a lot of times Democrats will in my dream uh, run with the narrative and that gives them the excuse for the voter fraud mm. so it's like oh everyone voted George Biden because cops killed Joe Floyd <laughs> oh oh yeah votes weren't flipped everyone voted because abortion you know like they have like these oh this is what everyone voted for and that's why there's all these Democrat votes and yeah. they kind of lead with like. An issue. Oh, George Floyd, cops killed him. Everyone got really mad at Trump and went out and voted against him. And it's like, did they? Or is that just what you used as an excuse to send like millions of mail in ballots through the machine in my dream? Yeah, of course. I had a dream about that. Okay. So it's something to think about. Um, either way, it feels they need like pretext is what you're saying. Yeah. They need some sort of storyline. It's a yeah. Hollywood movie and they need it every time. You can't just blow out the Republicans as the Democrats when everything's falling apart. Every, you need like an excuse. By every metric, America is in kind of worse shape than it was four years ago, three years ago. But then all of a sudden, everyone same, same with like Gavin Newsom in California. Remember that recall where he like got more votes than the actual <laughs> election? Yeah. And it's like So oh. how do you get recalled in the first place? Yeah. So that's something to keep an eye out for. No need algorithms, no need machines. Just tell us how many versus how many. And yeah. that's all we need to know. Uh, either way, with things ramping up going to 24, it feels like there is a tide coming that's kind of violent. Mm. seems like there's a lot of unhinged anti-Trumpers out there. Yeah. And I'll, we'll explain it in the next section, too. It kind of, like, ties in with the Israel stuff. But check out this guy, for example, at the polls. Hey, young man. Hi. All maggot needs to go to get now. You Republican maggot maggots are scum. You're scum, buddy. So, like, you know. Rough couple years for Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> Yeah. He really fell off. So things are kind of getting a little heated. There's another clip from that same section where the guy's doing a pro-life demonstration. And look what happens. What do you guys think? What do you think? Damn. Let it go. I'm all right. It's all right. I yeah. like that guy. Yeah. But... You know, drink thrown in face for his views, and it's kind of crazy because little he, rat runs away. Yeah, he throws his smoothie. Yeah, <laughs> if you're really like some sort of Chad, you could just throw the smoothie and then stand there and be like, "Yeah, now what?" Yeah, you exactly. scurry away. He runs away, and then think about the situation too. It's like I'm not ever advocating for violence, but if someone should have a drink thrown on them, should it be the people who are standing up for the unborn, or should it be the people that are killing the unborn? And it's like, uh, not the guy who's trying to stop it. That's yeah. So that's demon shit right there. Yep. Um, yeah, so Trump is doing better in the polls. And with that is going to come this anti-Trump uh, and anti-MAGA sentiment. Uh, there was a, I think it was a CNN or maybe MSNBC. It was CNN where they kind of talked about how he's doing better in the polls. Watch this. Reading in the crosstabs, the most important part, as Phil reminds us, <laughs> just all of those from women to Hispanic voters, black voters, 22% of black voters behind Trump, that is not seen in mm -hmm. the modern era for a Republican frontrunner, right? I mean, wow. It, it's startling. <laughs> I, I, I looked at the, the Democratic response, uh, Kevin Munoz, the, the spokesman for Biden, and this idea that, you know, we have a year, we can turn things around. I think you have to look at this being a challenge from the very beginning, right? Black voters from the very beginning were saying that, we will help you get Joe Biden into office. Um, but, you know, this is not necessarily our preference. Uh, this was uh, about democracy and saving democracy. And so yeah, here we are a year democracy. later. Our show is better than this. Yeah. <laughs> These people suck. They have nothing to say and they're so slow. And they just like lie and kind of talk about a fake world that they try to create. And that was the reaction to that showed Trump leading polls against Biden in like five swing states. 
Um, yeah. And then, so CNN, they're like, whoa, I'm shocked by this poll. And you're like, you're shocked. You think people don't want change after like everything's worse. And, uh, everybody has bills like their home insurance, car insurance, uh, like any bill that they have their energy, gas, grocery, gas, store. groceries, energy, everything went up. And now everybody has the same exact salary, but way less money. And then you're like, hmm, wow, these polls are concerning. It's like you couldn't vibe out that things weren't going great. Yeah, why do they want to elect the guy that's going to smash everything up? Yeah. Um, but we have it on our side, too. Uh, Will Chamberlain had a tweet. It said— uh, Known DeSantis guy, right? DeSantis guy. You know we're having a really bad night, but we're sure to do better if we nominate a guy who will be convicted, who will be a convicted felon on Election Day. Oh, great, Will. Yeah. Let's just let's just nominate DeSantis and they can arrest Trump and we'll just go back to how things were. Yeah, there should be a community notes on this tweet that says, Will Chamberlain moved to Jacksonville to work for the DeSantis campaign. Yeah. Like, I yeah. think he got fired, though. Uh, I thought he was back on. Maybe. We'll see. That tweet reads like he's back on. So yeah, we'll but we need to elect DeSantis because they're going to arrest Trump and we kind of have to just let They're going to arrest Trump on the, what What do you call it, monkey jury or what's uh, the, the- Kangaroo court. Kangaroo court. <laughs> Monkey Jerry. Yeah, uh, kangaroo court. And then there's actually yeah. a thing that Trump was trying to read in court uh, earlier in the week that exonerates him from the this judge. whole thing. And the judge wouldn't let him read it. Can you just read the part that describes it? Yeah, it said Donald Trump reportedly pulled out a piece of paper from his suit jacket in court claiming it would clear him of all wrongdoing in the $250 million fraud case. Left-wing judge uh, Arthur Engoron uh, refused to let him read it. The paper in question reportedly was a disclaimer clause relating to a financial statement that AG Letitia James is using to go after him. I would love to read this, Your Honor, if I could, Trump reportedly asked the judge. Not at this point. Not at this point, the judge replied. I'm shocked, Trump shot back. The disclaimer clause, according to Trump, meant that he wasn't liable for any inaccuracies on the documents. I think that the statements of financial conditions were very good, were, were actually somewhat conservative, and they were totally protected, and so was I by the disclaimer clause, Trump argued. So the disclaimer says if there's anything wrong or inaccurate on these things, it's not Trump's fault. Yeah. And that, I guess, can't get read in court. Can't bring that up in court on the actual case revolving that valuation and yeah. those financial documents. So, yeah. But let's just let DeSantis, let them put Trump away, and we'll get DeSantis in there, and he can hobble into the White House. Yep. Or he can lose to Joe Biden and mm -hmm. then not, not question it. Yep. All right, let's move on. Let's get into the Israel section. <laughs> oh, great. Everyone's favorite part great. of the show. But as you guys know, we tend to be right about most stuff. We're right about Ukraine. We're right about COVID. We're right about pretty much everything. So in the Israel section today, we're going to make some points that maybe you haven't heard before. Um, I am starting to see the push to get Palestinian refugees here. Of course. And we knew it was coming. Um, there was a draft letter going around. A Senate source tells me that Senator Durbin, Congresswoman Jay Paul, and uh, Congresswoman Schakowsky are circulating this letter calling to open the floodgates for Palestinians to come to the U.S. It's a long letter, but, you know. But Palestinians to come to the U.S. The people who were ignored for being killed because they side with terrorists and they're basically the same as terrorists, doesn't matter if civilians die because they're terrorist adjacent. Now on the other they, they side- They need of, to come here. The other side of their mouth, it's we got to get them here ASAP and help them. You can't have it both ways. Which happens a lot. Yeah. There's a war that's because of or involving Israel- a lot of people get displaced that are third worlders. And then because of NGOs, it's on Europe and America to take them in. Yeah. Which is not what I'm here for. It's not what we vote for. It's not my country. Here's what Cori Bush had to say about it. Black people, the insurrection, racism. <laughs> so that's all I hear. Yeah. What was that? Were we being racist? Those are your own words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, not, not out of context at all. Uh, but at this point, it feels like it's a full-blown invasion. I think phase one was getting everyone here, which they've done successfully. As you can see in the background, there's just military-aged men constantly showing up. Yeah, they're And all I think phase two is going to be something. And it might be kind of like a terrorism type thing. In my mind, my gut, it tells me that phase two is like these people doing crimes organized on purpose against right-wing political people. Maybe. Kind of like a little hit list type of thing, and they come in and do terrorism and make everyone chaotic and scared. Maybe. maybe. That's kind of what it feels like what's going on. Maybe they have a you know a list of political opponents they want to go after. Yeah. Um, but let's move on to the ad that we saw. The Army has a new ad that's out now, and it involves white people in the commercial, which you know means we're probably going to war soon. Stand 
All right, you get it. Yeah. No it's gay a, shit. Yeah. It's, it's just a, white guys. It's a military out of all white guys. Yeah. It's a real war now, this time. Yeah. So here's the point that we haven't made. Well, maybe we have made, but I want to make again. Uh, the Israel versus Hamas situation, Palestine, Israel, however you want to phrase it, uh, it's an excuse to attack wh white people. In, what do you mean? In my mind. It's like, um, basically, there's a lot of like race hate where people don't like white people. And the pro-Palestinian side sees the conflict with Israel as like oppressed versus oppressor and colonized versus colonizers. And they think Jewish people are white because they don't really understand like the world and how it works. And um, I'm just kind of telling you guys, it's going to result in more anti-white violence than ever before, more than it's going to be anti-Semitic violence in the U.S. In the U.S., it's going to be a justification for people of color to say, oh, the days of oppressor versus oppressed are done. We're fighting back against the colonizers. You see this sign they had up in Brooklyn. Uh, can, you, can you click that? Oh, yeah. From Brooklyn uh, to Palestine, settlers are the problem. Yeah. So... It's, settlers like what are, the people who built up everything you mean yeah settlers exactly so there's going to be a lot of anti-white sentiment increasing because of the palestine hamas israel middle east situation uh there was an article that came out about diversity this is kind of like a funny uh, juxtaposition but there was two articles and they kind of i forget who posted this but they compared the two articles yeah, Arsenal have released a statement to acknowledge a lack of diversity in their women's team and say they will work to deliver greater diversity as a priority. Nice all-white women's team right there. That's a problem. And then diverse photo shoot sends powerful message, never be sorry for being black, and that's all black women. <laughs> so by definition, all the same race is not diverse, that's just black. Mm -hmm. But that actually counts as diversity in the fake world. So, uh, you know, ignore your own biases, ignore your own thought process, and just accept that yeah. uh, Western countries need to be more black, period. Exactly. All, all white is bad. All brown is good. Yep. Fun living here, guys. Yep. Um, all right. Well, that gets us out of the Israel and the serious business. Well, you know, Israel and serious business, Israel, as far as I'm concerned, can take care of themselves. Yeah. You know, they got the Iron Dome. They have, like, uh, constant perpetual enlistment, you know? They have a fresh batch. So it's like they, they got a pretty strong hold, plus U.S., drives a couple warships past in the Mediterranean, you're good, yeah. right? Like, we don't really need that much. Wish we so could help. But no no drawn-out conflicts for America. We obviously can't afford that. We're gushing blood. Our yeah. neck is gushing blood. We're dead soon. So, yeah. Um, all right, we're moving on. We're still in housekeeping. Make sure you guys use this opportunity to tickle the post. Help us juice the algorithm. Leave a comment. Leave a comment again. And then comment what you actually want to talk about. Uh, like the video as well, and make sure notifications are on. And also, we have a P.O. box. So if you guys want to send us stuff, send it to the P.O. Box, and we'll pick it up every Friday like we have been. We've been getting a lot of good stuff. So thank you guys for sending. Please send more. And if you're sending a product or something, send two so Richard Rapway can have one too. All right, moving on. We're still in housekeeping. Mr. Beast. Yeah, Mr. Beast uh, built 500 wells in Africa, and uh, Yahoo News had a headline that said, while American YouTuber Mr. Beast's goal was to provide clean drinking water for 500,000 people, Activists say his action shamed the Kenyan government and helped perpetuate the stereotype that Africa is dependent on handouts. Dependent on handouts. It's not like he came in and built like a high speed rail. I know. Like some really modern thing that's like, whoa, we it's, have this now. It's like a single vehicle drill that taps down into the aquifers that already exist. Yeah. And then a pump at the top of it. It's like the yeah. most simple shit of all time. He and built it, a well. Oh, does it, does a Kenyan government feel bad now? You guys can't drill into the ground and figure it out. We had wells Ken like 500 years ago. I know. Kenyan government's feelings versus people actually drinking water. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, Mr. Beast, bad guy. Yeah. Um, all right, moving on. We have the most impressive women's athlete ever since that last field hockey girl. Who was it? Evie ago. Grendel? Evie yeah. Grendel, the field hockey girl? <laughs> Top <laughs> corner cheese from the goal line? Yeah. We have a new one of those. All right. Hey, we celebrate women. Yeah. When we they're good at stuff, we play it. All right, here we go. Boom, over her head. Top cheese as well. That's the best woman's sports performance I have ever seen since e Evie Grindle. Evie Grindle, you have one week to respond. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, last page of housekeeping. It is Friday, so we're going to do doppels and shout outs. I know it's not everyone's favorite. That's why we stopped doing doppelgangers, but we're going to do them real quick. Uh, Richard Rapway, there's you. Sociopath for Jesus, I'll take it. Nice. There's, Fleckus, here's, there's you. me with no shoes on, singing a song. There's Rapway on his bike. That's Hispanic. actually you. Hispanic Rapway on a bike. Oh. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm <laughs> yeah. fine. And there's Rapway doing car for sale stuff. You're okay. on the right. That actually is you too. Nice. I think AI might know you. And then just like put you in when people request like man shakes hand with other man. And then they just use like a Richard Ratboy preset. I'll take it. I'll take it. And then finally, locally grown Pennsylvania sliced peaches. There's there's you older. In a, a couple bit. years. Yeah. Yeah. There's you in about a year. I'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Six, <laughs> six to eight months. And now we have some shout outs. Shout out to Kyle Stevens and his girlfriend, Ashley. They are show enjoyers. Um, we also have uh, Bodan and Angelica. They have their wedding anniversary, and it's Angelica's birthday. So happy birthday. We love you guys. And we also have a tweet that we're going to read. Can you read that? Fleckus, can my husband, father of the baby Caleb, a.k.a. Josh, get a shout out for his birthday November 11th? We are huge fans. Happy birthday coming up. Happy for you guys. Um, and then we also have some really high quality shout outs that were sent to us this week. Check these out. All right. This is a uh, refueling aircraft. Yeah. It's uh, refueling some jets. This is a guy who's deployed right now. It says on the screen, he shows the podcast. There it is. Wow. And it says featuring Richard. Wrap away. Featuring Richard Rapaway. Very cool. Shout out. Thank you for your service. Let's go to the yelling at EMTs one. This is my favorite shout out from the last like month. I like when boys get together and start doing yeah. guy stuff. And remember last week on the show, or maybe it was Tuesday, we talked about how we saw EMTs walking a little slow. No hustle. No hustle. So we said, hey, if you see EMTs, shout out the show. He fucking killed him. And they go, but you don't have to worry. All right, let's go. Hurry up, hurry up. Fucking talk to the podcast. Let's go, let's go. Oh, man. (laughs) Not exactly the situation. Not exactly the same, but I appreciate that intensity. That's some New Yorker stuff right there. And I I want to make a broader point here. I think it's Americana. It's pure Americana to yell at people out the window. You call someone a fat fuck. Maybe you see an Asian guy and there's something you want to say about that. (laughs) Maybe you want to yell at a trans person. I think it's pretty much fair game, and it's like an American pastime to talk shit out the window. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. We invented cars. We invented yelling shit out the window. So Yeah, that's like what you do. Um, and then you should be able to take it, too, and it kind of keeps society a little tough because anyone can just yell, hey, fat fuck DJ Khaled. <laughs> yeah. And you go, ah. You get one, and then you pay it forward to the next guy who's <laughs> yeah. sloppier than you. Um, so as we said, we did mention last week that EMTs were going too slow. We got a bunch of comments from people um, who made us kind of maybe recalibrate our opinion on that. Okay. One guy said, I used to be a full-time firefighter EMT. I can tell you that after you've responded to the same apartment 47 times because some fat person needs a lift assist, you start to lose motivation. Okay, that's fair. So you fair. have insider knowledge and you yep. know. All right. And then what's, can you read that one? Paramedic on scene are told to not rush and become another patient. Example, running up the stairs and spraining an ankle. Not to mention when treating a patient's uh, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. If they were driving in the ambulance, maybe it was the dirtbag ambulance abuser who calls 10 times a day to get a sandwich from the hospital or closer to their drug dealer. All right, so there's some street rat shit that's going on that we need to be yeah. aware of. But this was guys literally walking into a building that we saw with just zero It hustle. was zero, but it was probably just a fat fuck, not emergency. Yeah. So okay, we're we're sensitive. Hey, we're sensitive to street rats abusing the system. You guys have seen Urban Decay. You, yeah. You've seen Cringe. So. Um. So maybe slow EMTs are fine. Yeah. Nah, I'm not ready to rule it out yet. <laughs> All right. And the last one, John Bachman from John Bachman Show on Newsmax. Raheem, great to see you. We'll have you back, of course. Thank you. Love to talk to you again. You guys are doing great work at National Pulse. I probably say this too much, but I love the Fleckus podcast. People can subscribe to that too as part of the National Pulse. Great stuff, Great. Raheem. Thanks, buddy. Very nice. Thank you, Thank you, John Bachman. Show John. watcher. Show watcher. Known show watcher. Known, known associate. Show, yeah. Known associate. Known show watcher. Friend of ours in real life. Um, you, have you met? Uh, I think I've met him. Yeah, I met, I've met John. Yeah. yeah. In real life. It counts. Okay. All right. Well, that is the end of housekeeping. Before we get into Cringe of the Week, this week's Cringe of the Week is brought to you by FleckusMerch.com. Guys, the holidays are coming up. I'm wearing some FleckusMerch.com right now. 
get your very cool shirts. We have the podcast shirt. We have the Clintons where they're pointing guns at people in the Pulp Fiction style. Uh, we have some cool Trump shirts. All great stuff. Supports the show. Hoodies, t-shirts, all great things. Fleckusmerch.com is the website. Get your orders in for the holidays. Whoever you give it to will love it. All right, Cringe of the Week. First one's first. We have a really good Cringe of the Week this week. Yeah. Well, this is one of our best cringes. Uh, the climate change protesters. Women did not get the vote by voting. It is time for deeds and not words. It is time to just stop oil. Politics is failing us. Politics filled women in 1914. If millions will die due to new oil and gas licenses, millions! If we love history, if we love art, and if we love our families, right, wrap it up. we must just stop oil. Here's the important part, right? Yeah, yeah. So this painting is from 1651, which is like pre-oil, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were, we were fucking lighting lamps with whale blubber when this painting was made. And here's what I'm noticing from this, what's really going on. This guy is just trying to get with this girl. Look at this. He Look sits at the end. down. He sits down next to her and he puts his hand out. And that's he what goes, he wanted the whole time. Let's hold hands. Let's hold hands. And then she'll say, oh, we're just friends. And then she'll bang some finance guy. <laughs> yeah, pretty that's, much. <laughs> that's how it goes. Yeah. Some it, finance guy who thinks she's retarded. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Who's like, I'm using you. Uh, and it's not good for anybody. But yeah, uh, that's what it is. And then here's this, too. Like when they after they've cracked the thing and they start yelling their message, that's when you can still spear them. Mm-hmm. You can still fully tackle them and be like, I didn't know what they were going to do next. Thought that art's gonna, priceless. Yeah, thought they were going to hit a person. Yeah. So you can still tackle them up here. Once they've like about 20 seconds into their speech, you can't do anything anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there is that window where. Oh, they could hit it again. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, and then anecdotally, there were some climate protesters who were blocking traffic in Panama who got killed. Yeah, that guy had enough. So it can he get dangerous. Yeah. So, hey, if you believe in what you stand for, you'd be ready to die for it. Yeah. Um, all right. Gender neutral bathrooms. Person. We're not condoning that, but it can happen. We're not condoning that, but that's what could happen. I have a problem with gender neutral bathrooms. There, I said it. Most of the time, when I go into a gender-neutral bathroom, somebody has just taken a big, stinky dump. At some point, cisgendered people figured out that they now had a nice private bathroom where they could go and take all of their dumps. It's gross. Yeah, so this is how we win, boys. So we agree, right? Hate crime adjacent dumps. Yeah, all dumps going forward. If you're in the airport, don't go in Gen Pop. Get in that nice private stall. It's got the lock on it. It might say non-binary, but you can't read, right? Yeah. So go and blow it out, boys. It also, makes this non-binary person a little upset. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how we win. That's how we get uh, control back of our country. Mm-hmm. And also, should I say it or do you want to say it? You can go ahead. Maybe we'll say it in the count of three at the same time. Okay. Because all guys know this. Whenever we use a gender-neutral bathroom, we piss all over the toilet, sink, and floor, and trash can, <laughs> and all the handles in the bathroom, yeah. especially when we're drunk. That's what <laughs> you, we do. You wreck that shit. You just pee everywhere. That's what we do. No. All guys know that. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, you know what? It's so funny. It's and then so- we just take a video of it and send it to your boys. Yeah. That's what guys do. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you know what's funny to me, too, is this person is talking about bathroom preferences and demanding uh, some certain bathroom behavior when it's like these men in skirts have been ignoring (laughs) that the whole time. So I think it's time for a little revenge, guys. Hog. Hey, hog the gender neutral bathrooms. Scroll on your phone. Blow it out. Yeah, that's a good point. It's like the men in skirts we've been ignoring, but then people using the bathroom to go to the bathroom is the problem. Yeah. Yeah. We got to figure it out. Um, All right, let's move on to the doctor trip moles girl. I have a story to tell. I just went to the doctor. I have like these moles all over my body. And I was like, yeah, okay, I should probably get them checked out. I go in to see the doctor and I tell him, you know, moles and stuff. And he's like, typey, type, type, type. Have you lost or gained any weight recently? And I was like, no, I don't weigh myself. I, you know, have history with like eating disorders. He straight up was like, yeah, you should lose weight. 
and like it didn't even phase me like back in the day that would have like stung but i think i've done so much work on this stuff like innerly that it didn't feel as yucky it's still really shitty for a medical professional to be asking what am i eating how much am i eating am i trying to lose weight i should lose weight but i'm actually really proud of myself i handled it so this is just an example of how fat people are treated by medical professionals even for like no reason like literally no so reason. yeah for no reason <laughs> no reason like, well yeah have you been picking or not yeah what's the vibe i know you're not stepping on the scale but you're trending up or down yeah, and she goes, for no reason. It's like, though, the, uh, the doctor must have had a long day. Maybe he's getting a divorce. His wife's taking the kids, and he just wanted to lash out. <laughs> he wanted to bully some fat fuck. And meanwhile, it's the only person in her life who's probably, like, actually looking out for her health and, like, going to be honest about, like, what she needs to do. The only person who she ever talks to who actually, see, who actually sees the end result of, like, wow, none of my fat patients make it, but the skinny <laughs> ones, they all keep coming what, till they're 70. Yeah, exactly. I talked to my medic Sisyphus about this. Okay. Uh, and he said, the left doesn't see a connection between health and actions. Doctors shouldn't ask about your weight. Pregnancy just randomly happens, which is why we need abortion. Mental health is a chemical imbalance. But like, what's going to happen when you eat fast food every day? Yeah. You know, it doesn't connect to like my feelings or my weight or anything like that. They just kind of see it as completely separate. And then they're, they're just like a victim of the environment of whatever's going to happen to them. Yeah. You, but, f you fall into gluttony induced uh, depression. And yeah. It's like, oh, I just keep picking and it's a death spiral. And it's like, well, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Yeah, it's not your fault. All right, let's go to the unhinged partner. This is a fast clip, um, but I just wanted to show you guys this because it's funny. It says, uh, my partner's beige flag is they do unhinged things like this for no reason with no warning. And beige flag means it's they like it. And it's just a <laughs> fucked up haircut. Just the most <laughs> fucked up haircut you could ever see on earth. But hey, you got control of your own life. Look yeah. how much control I have. I can do this. I it's can do the stupidest checkerboard <laughs> length pattern of hair you've ever seen. Cool, yeah. And if the doctor tells me I'm fat, fuck him. <laughs> yeah. It's not my fault. You're showing dad. Yeah. All right, let's go to the BLM supporter dead name court case problem. Yeah, let's just go to this guy who probably doesn't listen to our advice when we tell him what bathroom to use. Mm-hmm. Angry. I just learned something, uh, and I just I'm kind of speechless, and I just want to capture some of what's going on and talk about this. So I've just learned that uh, with my court case here, um, they filed the charges in my dead name. Um, I'm transgender, and I use she and her pronouns, and I legally changed my name six years ago uh, to Danielle Tatiana Moscato. I uh, came out of the closet 10 years ago, um, and they filed these charges in my dead name, which is an offensive thing to do, to, to bring up somebody's dead name for any reason. I mean, you just don't do it. It's transphobic. It's, it's unkind to all trans people. You just, there's no reason to do that. Um, and anyway, so they filed these charges against me in my dead name. And so I was forced to show up in court and use you know whatever limited leeway I might have with this judge about this to mention that I first need some more time to come up with the money to hire an attorney. Yeah, we I get it. Have he looks like a Danielle. Yeah, Danielle Tatiana. That's he picked a great name. That's exactly what I when I close my eyes and picture Danielle Tatiana, I think of a balding fat man, disabled with a receding hairline and long nails. Yeah. That's that's it. He so. was arrested for stalking, harassing, and financially exploiting his parents, and they have a restraining order against them. All around good guy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Average experience with a disabled trans yeah. Danielle. But we, I don't know. I think we kind of need to be careful because he might be a decorated military person. Yeah. I. <laughs> this guy, this guy could be uh, leading a whole fleet in the South Pacific. That's what we need. With that, just yeah. uh, just a. Uh, badges of honor yeah as many medals as you can fit on a chest get this guy in uniform dude yeah and a photo of him and then have joe biden tweet it yeah go today's a good day because we got this guy yeah it's so funny when uh these types of people the only thing they work hard on is like making you say the name they don't do any work on presenting as a female or looking like what they believe they are mm -hmm. this guy doesn't even fake a voice yeah, and he and he expects you to call him Danielle Tatiana. It's like, brother, you got work to do before I need to get called out. Before right? I call you Danielle. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like you have your own rules. Like you should be looking like something. 
Mm-hmm. You, sh- you should be making an effort before I have to make one. I'm a stranger. Yeah, exactly. But his victim status and him being sad about not being called Danielle, I guess, is more important than the crimes. The stalking done. and harassing <laughs> and uh, financial exploitation of, of his, his parents. elderly parents. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the freckle tattoo regret. So there's a new trend where people are getting tattoos of freckles on their face. And here's what it looks like. So here they are, and you can see a little regret in some of their faces. They're trying to put on a happy face and be... But there's a couple faces where it's just... Hmm. Look at this one. She's yeah. got some lifeless eyes. What are you thinking? So wh- what's It looks the- like horrible acne. It looks like you have acne. I know, and we'll see. I mean, this is probably right after they did it, right? But this is going into a pillar of our show, which has kind of become a theme over the last few weeks, is don't be part of the experiment. Yeah. Don't be part of the test group. Don't be the first 100 people to get freckle tattoos to your face. But I guess you can because you're an independent woman. You don't have to listen to anyone, Dad. And then this okay. isn't just women. This Here's what you did. There's a male version of this, too, which is getting, if you're a male pattern baldness guy, you get tattooed stubble. So mm-hmm. it looks like you have a hairline. So check this out. Yeah, here it goes. That's a before. And then they line it up and they tattoo you. And that's your haircut forever now. And, that, and that's your haircut, no matter how much it fades, no matter how much you have to redo it. You're, you're 50 years old. You're on the hook. So, I mean, what do you think about this? I don't know yeah. how the how the freckles look long term. Guys, audience, I say stay away from it in general. Don't be the experiment. Don't, don't be, figure out if it's a good idea or not. We'll, we'll see it four or five years from now. Just ride out with whatever you got. Yeah. Have a little pride. Yeah. George Be Costanza. like Danielle Tatiana. Be like Daniel Tatiana. Be your true self. Just show up with whatever and force people to call you a specific thing. All right. So we have rising anti-white sentiment, like we said in the intro. Um, this lady, the first one who has the list of white slurs. Yeah, let's just play her really quick. Bruh, y'all were asking for my white people insert collection. I got y'all. We don't gatekeep around here. Y'all can save this video if you like want to, or you can like pause it just to see. This is A through like a little bit of C. So you can save this video or whatever and look at what you need to look at. And then this is C. And I don't know, I don't remember if this is all the way through C or not, but there's a lot of C stuff. And somebody had said in that other video that already had um, corn, what is it, cornstarch colonizer. So what I did, not corn starch colonizer, Somebody sorry to said that I had, right. you know, the one that yeah, I Yeah, we get it. To. We get the point. It She's hurts. not going to make yeah. any more salient points and really convince us, right? It hurts bad getting called all these things. Yeah. She has a whole list for every letter in the alphabet of all these white, anti-white slurs, which is interesting because we don't need a whole list of things to say to black people. I could say one word that'll make her tear apart a Walmart. I know the <laughs> one word. It's like a key. It unlocks it. And it, she'll be smashing things, candles. If there's any glass around, the glass will be shattered on the ground. And she's going to smash shit. Uh, also, Arctic Monkeys. That sounds sick. Greek Yogurt Gorilla. I like that. That's protein filled. <laughs> That's huge. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, but, you know, they call us gr- uh, white apes and uh, Greek Yogurt Gorillas because white guys sometimes look like monkeys. Yeah. You know how that is? Of course. So you ever look at a white guy and you're like, damn, like. You are a couple iterations away from ape. Yeah. That's how it is for white All the people. time for white people, yeah. you say that. That's how it is for white people. Um, but yeah, they're... Uh... Here's, here's my take on it, too. It's like, you can do whatever you want. None of these... It's like, yeah, go do your creative writing exercise. Have fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know how they say, oh, black people can't be racist because to be racist, you have to have, like, hate. And then institutional power, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, that's the thing that says black people can do whatever they want because, oh, well, they don't have any institutional power, so they can call you chalk monkey or whatever the fuck. The same – there's an inverse that kind of applies for white people, which is uh, you need the hate aspect of it, which she clearly has. But then white people, for this to be effective, need to have some sort of, like, shame or an inferiority complex, which – I don't have personally. Yeah. I don't go like, oh man, I'm really ashamed to be a white people. Man, that racial slur that she just made up, that hurts me. Yeah. It's like, nah, I'm fine, dude. We barbecue on the weekends. We wear polos. Yeah. Cornstarch colonizer we golf. doesn't bug me. Yeah. Cornstarch colonizer. All right. We're colonizers. Okay. Cool. That's what, fun. what do we colonize? Oh, the best country in the world. Yeah. Nice. All the sickest natural resources you wish yeah. you had. Cool. Yeah. Sick. 
Yeah. Uh, but there is like this change where the anti-whiteness is becoming more obvious and more like mainstream. And I think, like we said earlier in the show, it's because of the Palestine-Israel conflict yeah. where they're using it as like the floodgate that's opening for anti-white racism. There was a comment on like, uh, I think it was a George Floyd, Derek Chauvin video. Elijah McClain video. This girl says, now we can purge all the white folk in unity. If we can boost Fendi and Gucci, we can unify and dominate. Y'all playing around, man. Yeah. So that's, that's the proof that you can flip a dominant country's race because you can steal from Fendi and Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But keep in mind, too, if the roles were reversed, imagine if a white person said, hey, here's a list yeah. of all <laughs> black racial insults you could make from A to Z. There would be rallies in every city. Everything would get burned. People would be looting shit. Eh, I don't know about that. I, I'm sure people do have their lists. Oh, well, yeah. But I think I think if it was like a... A, a, a prominent person, a prominent person made a list, they would go crazy. Yeah. Um, but and because that would be a huge deal. Yeah. But then all the black crime that we see every day, that's not a huge deal. Yeah. Of it's course. worse to say something on the internet, I guess. Yeah. Uh, look at this next girl doing something similar. Um, it's very fucking annoying because I, I can't find housing because this shit's way too expensive. Because y'all crackers keep fucking coming here for no goddamn reason. Move the fuck back. Y'all are annoying. Nobody wants you here. Oh, nobody wants the crackers here. Well, those crackers moving there is the only reason why your grandma my house is actually worth anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, right? Like, I mean, it's the classic white flight urban decay. Yeah. You know, it, or uh, gentrification versus white flight. Mm -hmm. you know? And there was like that meme. I know it's run down, but I think I can make it look great again. And the white man's gentrifying our community. And then fine, I'll leave. White flights causing urban decay. Yeah, you can't win if you're white. Can't Unless win. you just live in a white neighborhood and you make that awesome and then all your collective property values go up and you retire off that. Yep. But let's not get too down or too depressed. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to Urban Decay. Hey. Maybe it'll get better. All right. First clip of Urban Decay. Uh, the perfect gift doesn't exist is the prompt. Uh, what is it? It's taking the security tags off. It's the magnet that takes the security tags off. And the prompt is the perfect gift doesn't exist. But the gift should be the clothes or the shoes, but now it's the ability to steal anything. It's kind of like teach a man to fish. Yeah. Like give a man clothes and shoes, he'll be happy for a little. Teach a man to steal clothes and shoes, he's happy for a lifetime. Yeah. And then, so these people, they don't have any shame. They already set off the beep, 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 <laughs> leaving the store. They, but they just need an easier way to get the tag off when they're home, right? They want to enjoy the stuff more for free. Uh, do you think we should comment on the color of the hands that are doing the detagging or no? I think I don't think we need to. No need to. Yeah, that would actually be maybe not tasteful. Yeah, yeah. We've been trying to be tasteful on the show lately. A little bit, but yeah. you know, you know what color the hand is. <laughs> yeah. Audio only. You can guess. Um, all right, let's go to the guy, the thief who says you can't touch me. Yeah, this is kind of a a broad point we've tried to make before about corporal punishment and mm -hmm. how you know if you kind of started beating up shoplifters, it might work. Mm -hmm. Looks like someone's getting ready to film. Oh, here he, he is, comes. two bags deep. Two bags, I'm ready to steal. He's got his Yeezys on. And then some guy just tackles him. Bam. Ooh, nice, get the legs. Tackles him, starts choking him. Headlock. Him down, headlock. Shoes are falling off. But here comes the important part. Yeah, here's where it gets interesting. They're on the ground. All the stuff he tried to steal is everywhere. <laughs> You can't do this. Yeah, you can't steal, you and your buddies, buddy. You can't touch me, bro. I, can't. I ain't can't touching touch you. Me. I ain't touching you. You can't touch me. You've been touched. You can't touch me. You can't touch me, I'm bro. I'm the cops on this. So yeah. I'm going to fucking see you. Go stop. So, yeah, me? the shoplifter, the street rat, he understands a rudimentary rule system, right? Yeah. He understands that, oh, the people who work at Walgreens aren't supposed to touch me to stop me from stealing. So the rules for the, th the, for the thief are, I can't be touched, not yeah. I can't steal. Yeah, exactly. So he's capable of understanding a system of rules. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, right now, society, it's like a little backwards, right? Yeah. And this was the tweet from uh, Wayne Burkett. He said, the shoplifter screaming, you can't touch me, should tell you everything you need to know. Contra progressives, criminals do have a rudimentary rudimentary ability to understand incentives and learn new rules and norms. So yeah, the progressives will say, oh, they're just stealing because they're desperate or they're poor and they have no other options. 
the guy's wearing Yeezys in a BMW sweatshirt. He knows the fake rules of I shouldn't be touched. I can just walk out of here as long as it's under $1,000 or whatever. He's only stealing because he thinks he can walk out un, un, uh, molested, you yeah, know? Exactly. Um, and so we know they can understand rules. And so now it's the time for the next leg of our plan, reinstituting corporal punishment just let some guy work this guy yeah, out. Or rewire the brain to go from, oh, no one will stop me, no one can touch me, to if I get caught, my hand gets cut off. It's going to be a fucking fight. Hand yeah. cut off, you know, we don't need to go back all that way. But, you know, threaten it. Threaten it a little bit. Maybe get some stumpy guys walking around who already have a stump. Yeah, and exactly. And have them be like, oh, I was stealing at Walgreens. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. Yeah. All right. The Battle Axe Fentanyl guy in New York City. This is a quick clip. But we got a guy here on the street. He's doing the fentanyl slump. Yeah. And he's got an, an axe on uh, with him. Yeah, a nice battle axe. But, you know, the cops need to leave him alone, wait till he kills someone. Yeah. Then I, they can arrest him, maybe. I don't know. That might be a toy. But um, the point is, like, you don't want to find out. You don't want to walk past him and be like, was that a toy? I don't know. I got to make an eyeball. Also, if you see someone doing the fentanyl slump like that, you should be legally allowed to kick them over like a rock stack. Ooh, rock stacks. You it's know, this, you push over the rock stacks yeah. so they're not supposed to be there? Because they shouldn't be there. The fentanyl guy on the street, he shouldn't be there. You Richard, should be able to kick him over. Richard's on to something. Yeah. All right. This next section of Urban Decay, it's a little bit reading intense, yeah. which is why we have Richard here. Yeah. I'm, I got to get prepared for this. You're the reader. Um, but we have multiple stories of repeat offenders that are terrorizing neighborhoods, and instead of getting arrested deservingly, Deservedly or deservingly? Deservedly. Deservedly. Um, they are let back out and it's ruining everyone's life. And then a couple of them are killing people. So let's go to the first one in Greenpoint, the menace of Greenpoint. All right. So this is a long winded article from, uh, from the Gothamist, right? It's about a Brooklyn uh, neighborhood in, yeah, Brooklyn called Greenpoint, right? And so this article starts off, Elizabeth Whitcomb said she was walking down Manhattan Avenue in Greenpoint, Brooklyn one evening this past spring when she noticed a man walking right beside her. Then he just grabbed my shoulders all of a sudden and pushed me, she said. Whitcomb, who was too nervous to look back, kept walking. She said that although she wasn't physically hurt, she was confused, overwhelmed, and shaken up. The next morning, Whitcomb posted about what happened to her on a Greenpoint Reddit thread. She described the man's appearance after someone asked what he looked like. Soon, several people responded, describing similar encounters with the same man. That's when Whitcomb realized the seemingly random shove on the street wasn't so random after all. Court records show the man who pushed Whitcomb currently faces charges ranging from harassment and menacing to assault and illegal possession of a knife. He has also been accused of groping and assaulting women on the north side of the neighborhood and is on the state's sex offender registry for forcible touching and sexual abuse convictions in 2017 and 2021. He denied the most recent charges against him at a recent court appearance and said there was no evidence. According to city officials, the man has gone to jail and psychiatric hospitals dozens of times, blah, blah, blah. So this guy's Johnny in and out. He's a menace. We're calling him the menace of Greenpoint, right? Yep. Uh, in Greenpoint, the man, uh, the man accused of pushing Whitcomb has become the topic of email chains, meetings with local officials, and multiple long Reddit threads. Interviews with more than a dozen people who live and work in the neighborhood reveal that assaults perpetrated by both both by and against the man have forced some in the neighborhood to interrogate their beliefs about the criminal justice and mental health system. Mm. Greenpointers face a difficult question. When someone with serious mental illness poses a threat, what's the best way to keep both the person and the community safe? You lock them up, you throw them out. Guys, when he's a prolific, <laughs> prolific repeat offender, you're like, how do we keep him safe? This is like yeah. inside the mind of liberals who want to feel good about themselves, right? Uh, so people often say it's only going to end when either he kills someone or he himself gets killed. Emma Davey, editor of local publication Greenpointer, said in May, there's kind of this feeling out there that, you know, the situation is about to come to a breaking point. Yeah. And then the next paragraph says, is the option to move? <laughs> You're going to sell your fucking house because one drug street rat is like terrorizing and everybody? Like Brooklyn's so expensive. If you own a house, you have like a great asset for yeah. life. A brick house. It's like yeah. you can't go tits up. You can't go wrong on that. Or you're right? paying like three to five grand to live there. Uh, but you have to move now because there's one guy who's like grabbing people that the police just won't arrest. He's assaulting people every day. All It's all he does. He wakes up. Um, Gothamist has chosen to withhold the man's name because of his mental illness and because he is at risk of additional attacks by people who want to take matter into their own hands. 
There are Reddit threads and WhatsApp groups dedicated to tracking his movements in the neighborhood, <laughs> and some people on those threads have threatened to hurt him, right? And so here's a couple things from Reddit. Like, uh, I'm assuming this is talking about Chris Brassard, who is an absolute terror and menace to the neighborhood. As far as I know, he's still at Rikers. So, like, Reddit, the Greenpoint Reddit, like, keeps track of this guy and knows when he's mm. out of jail by the fact that nobody's getting assaulted or reporting it on Reddit, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know why they would withhold his name. This man is a menace and has already had news articles dedicated to him. He harassed, harassed my wife and I on more than one occasion, and we always dash, dash across the street, blah, blah, blah. And then here's Christopher Broussard is back, like multiple Reddit posts and yeah, threads. All every, of, every month or so, there's another post about what he did. All about this guy. And then, yeah, so like maybe some sort of hypothetical threats against him are, are the real danger. He, yeah. He's the real victim, They don't want right? to put him at risk. And so, it's Gotham City. It's Gotham City, and so um, we're at a stalemate here. You write a 5,000-word think piece about how to handle it instead of just throwing the guy in a fucking cell, yeah. right? Um, and, you know, you could make the argument like, oh, well, the mental health institutions where he should be locked up have been closed. It's like, yeah, create a new wing in the jail for these types of perpetual yeah. reoffenders. The answer right? to that is not, oh, there's no mental health institutions, so we got to let him out. <laughs> yeah, It's like he's already gotten arrested so many times. There's no mental health institutions. Yeah, he should be in one of those. That would be ideal, but that's not the case. So jail is kind of like a shitty compromise. I don't know. Should we move? Yeah. Should I move because we don't have a society that has nuclear weapons doesn't have the means to fucking take out one guy? Arrest one street rat who's probably just the biggest piece of shit. Who's, who's been a net negative on taxpayers and everything for his entire life. We got to get out of here. Irredeemable. Let him have Brooklyn. Yeah, let, let's leave Greenpoint Brooklyn to him, the whole entire street. So then we're going to move over to another story from Chicago. Apologies for the reading. I it's mean, okay. Hey, sometimes we do it, but these are these are informative sections of the show. Mm -hmm. um, this one's about Chicago, a repeat offender that eventually murdered somebody. Yeah. So well, now this is actually really crazy. Sorry to interrupt, but no. this is actually like next level crazy. Wait till you hear the amount of times he's been arrested, even in between yeah. his most recent crime and then actually getting him. All right. So now charged with murder. This is from CWB Chicago again. Some of the best reporting in Chicago. Now charged with murdering a man on the Magnificent Mile. He's been arrested again and again for random attacks. 49-year-old uh, Henry Graham is the man accused of punching a man on the Magnificent Mile, causing him to fall to the pavement, strike his head, and eventually die has been repeatedly arrested for randomly battering people in Chicago, Evanston, and on the CTA, according to Cook County Records. But despite the ongoing attacks and the high probability that Graham has unmanaged mental health issues, authorities released him back on the streets again and again and again, right? In the past year alone, police have arrested Graham 11 times. Last November, we're going to run through his shit. Last November, he was accused of shoving a 71-year-old man into a glass storefront in Evanston, Failed to appear in court. Case was dropped. Earlier this year, kicking a woman in the leg and arm as she walked near Daly Plaza, a nice part of Chicago, you know, uh, central business district. Case was dropped. Uh, displayed irate behavior, punched a man in the chest, face, and arms on the CTA train near Dempster in March. Pleaded guilty and served uh, 33 days, right? The other ones are just cases dropped. You think if we did something as a right-wing organization. You think anything would get fucking dropped? The DA would take a special interest in that case. I've, I've seen your file and I've yeah. taken a special interest. One week later, he was arrested for assault in Evanston, Evanston failure to appear, blah, blah, blah. So uh, let's get to the current issue. This which is was, the part that I wanted to give you guys a heads up on. This is where it gets crazy. And this is the future of the guy in Brooklyn too, yeah. right? Like eventually someone gets killed. Mm -hmm. uh, Russ Long, a 49-year-old River North resident and longtime employee at Northern Trust, great company, like financial company that's in the heart of Chicago, River North resident, was carrying a shopping bag as he passed the Cartier store on North Michigan Avenue. Oh, Cartier store. Do they have those in the slums? Mm. Do they have those in the bad parts of Chicago? Mm -mm. Witnesses saw Graham approaching Long quickly from behind without saying a word. He twisted his torso back, then sprung it forward, plowing his fist into the back of Long's head. A little sucker punch action. Long immediately fell forward, striking his head on the pavement. As Long began bleeding on the ground, Graham sat down on a nearby fire hydrant and stared at him for about five minutes. So just a fucking so street. So the guy got knocked out, he's on the ground, and then the guy who punched him is just looking at him for five minutes. Exactly. Two witnesses followed him until the, the puncher, until they crossed paths with the Chicago police unit, Rogers said. Uh, the officers detained Graham, and as their body cameras were rolling, he admitted to hitting Long and knocking him unconscious. He admits the murder, right? To the cops, on uh, camera. And it wasn't yet a murder. It was just a, an assault. 
Uh, the police let him go. For four days, Long's friends tried in vain to get the Chicago Police Department to file a report about the attack. Eventually, on July 2nd, a friend of Long's called 911 from his hospital bed and asked for an officer to come to Northwest Memorial Hospital to take a report. Once again, the city's call taker uh, refused to send an officer because Long could not speak, but eventually relented and dispatched a car. Um, only then did CPD begin the process of documenting and investigating what happened to Long, who died of his injuries 10 days later. Rogers said an autopsy showed severe injuries. It would have required significant force. His frontal bone and the base of his skull were fractured. All that good stuff, you know, the thing that leads to a death, right? A sucker punch to the back of the head. Chicago police arrested Graham at the Cook County Jail on October 25th. He, he again admitted to hitting Long, and he demonstrated how he did it on video, right? He used a closed fist, blah, blah, blah. Between the time Chicago cops released Graham minutes after the attack and the filing of murder charges last week, he had been arrested six more times, according to court records. So we're not going to go through all of them, trespassing, throwing a bottle, uh, pushing a 14-year-old girl, ca causing her to fall over. Um, he, four felony counts of aggravated battery to police officers and striking a Lakeview man with a broomstick outside L Wrigley Field. So they eventually, they initially detained him and let, let him, him go. go. And then in, in the matter of like a week to 10 days, by the time that guy died and they rearrested him, he had been arrested six more times and let go all those times. So guys, some just people- let him go. They let him go. Yeah. Oh yeah, you did it. You admit it. And you're a street rat and the guy's in the hospital. Just get out of you here. You think the whole city of <laughs> Chicago should move? Yeah. I think people should pack up and move and let this guy take over the city yeah. instead of actually doing the right thing, which is, keep. you know, a lot of times it's like, okay, jail, you accidentally kill a guy in a DUI, like you need to go to jail, rehab yourself, think about your actions. If you're this guy, you just need jail to be kept away from normal people. Yeah. That's pretty much it, right? Like yeah. we're, we're not expecting this guy to have a, a character arc where he gets redeemed. He just needs to be kept He's away from He's not thinking society. like, oh, I messed up. Yeah. When I, I get have out, guilt. I'm, yeah. Nothing like that. Uh, how, remember the Safety Act in Chicago? Of course. Where it was like no cash bail. Was that what it was? Yeah, and they call it the Safety Act because it releases uh, violent criminals back on the street ASAP. So they had to do it a little backwards, you know? Yeah. There was another story in Nashville. Similar thing. Final piece. Yeah, a, a poor girl, a Belmont College student, was uh, November 2023, Nashville, Tennessee, yesterday, 18-year-old Belmont University student Jillian Ludwig was shot in the head by a stray bullet when she was walking in a car or in a park near the university. Uh, the At 3.30 in the afternoon. 3.30 in the afternoon. Uh, the young woman uh, was found at about 3.30 in the afternoon, about an hour after she was shot. Shaquille Taylor, 29, is being charged with aggravated assault and evidence tampering and is being held on a $280,000 bond. He was shooting at another car when he hit the innocent victim. Miss Ludwig is hospitalized in extremely critical condition at Vanderbilt Medical Center uh, and is not expected to survive. And that guy was let out, too. So, yeah, this guy had multiple charges. Um, Burglary, robbery, aggravated assault. Yep, all 2015, 2016, 2021 was uh, his most recent aggravated assault. With deadly a de with weapon. With a deadly weapon. So, yeah, guys, I mean, the jail isn't about like, oh, man, the criminal. This might be too mean on the criminal. It's for this girl. It's for this 18-year-old girl. It's for the 49-year-old Northern Trust employee who got sucker punched in the back of the head and died 25 years sooner than he was supposed to die. Mm -hmm. It's not really about, like, making the criminal feel good. So um, yeah. we'll, we'll be paying attention to this Greenpoint man in Brooklyn uh, and waiting to see when his murder comes because exactly. he's, he's going to kill someone eventually too. And these aren't situations where, oh, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time or, oh, you were out at four in the morning in a bad neighborhood. It's like you're a freshman on your college campus. You're a freshman on college campus walking a, walking around at 3.30 in the afternoon or you're that guy in front of, in Chicago, Cartier. in front of Cartier going to your, your finance job and you're kind of just an old man walking around. Yeah. And you just get sucker punched and killed by so, these street rats. Guys, head on a swivel. If someone looks like a street rat, you know, you got to assume everyone is. If they look and walk and sound like a street rat, you got to assume a sucker punch is coming. You got to assume some sort of knife or battle axe. If you see someone who's got the fentanyl leans, you run over, you kick him over. <laughs> um, that's a joke. But, you know, it's nobody's helping you. Nobody's helping us. They just uh, kick the can down the road like we said on Tuesday and uh, wait for the final death blow of someone who eventually puts them in jail for a, a And real when you ask time. for help, they call you hateful. Oh, we need to 
revamp our policing. We need to defund the police. Oh, police are attacking black people. What are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. All right, let's move on. Don't get too down. Don't get too depressed. We're going on to Uplifting Gold. All right, let's go to our first clip of Uplifting Gold. A girl taps a trans person in uh, jiu-jitsu. North American Grappling Association. So they're going at it. There's obviously one of them people is a man. Oh, using the muscle. The man uses the muscle. He's really like... Oh, yeah, he's trying to rub you into the ground. He can just snap an arm. You think he gets bricked up off this shit, too? Yeah. Yeah, he That's likes this he shit. Likes it. Oh, got your back, man. You couldn't muscle your way out of that. And then she gets him. She little hooks guillotine. him. Little oh, guillotine. Oh, full body guillotine. Guillotine, got Cap- him. Tap time, Mr. Man. Nope, try it again. Reset Standing it. Standing guillotine. Oh, blow him out. Yep, Tap, he's tapping. tapping. That's, That's right, pussy. Up. That's what's up. That's right, pussy. And he's mad because he's like, I'm a man. I'm supposed to win. Mm-hmm. But not, ah, not all the time. All right, let's go to the Bears fan de-escalation. Yeah, some Vikings fans see a Bears fan they want to talk a little shit to. Yeah. It's, it's a Bears fan. It's a Bears fan. We have some common ground. We have some common ground. We, we got to start talking shit. <laughs> got to start talking shit. Oh. Hi. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> nice to meet you. No, the friendliest go, go guy bears. ever. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, ding dong. Ding dong. You have a good day. Right, man. <laughs> ding dong. Just, get this, get just completely this turned it on. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> like, what we're were you going to talk to him about? Like, he know. doesn't know what yeah. they're going to talk to him about. Like, why would they tap his shoulder? They were going to talk shit. Hey, uh, hi. <laughs> I like Down Syndrome people, man. Me too. If they have someone who takes care of them, they're very happy-go-lucky. They're it's stocky. A, yeah. Some of them get into weightlifting. It's a good bunch. Yeah. Good group of guys. Good group of guys. All right. Let's go to the undercover boss bit. This is funny. This guy says, me telling my coworker my whole life story just in case I'm on undercover boss. The sob story. Because I had to drop out of school because I didn't have no money. So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really get a chance to finish off college. And then... Um, you know, I take care of my nephews and nieces, and I haven't even got a chance to. I've never been on a vacation before. I've never been on. The, the, the <laughs> thing again. You know, life has been hard. I had to scale down and go to just a measly Honda. Um, that's been. Right, you get the point. <laughs> I always, I always made that joke of like undercover boss. Oh, my boss is on vacation. Who's this new guy? And it's like someone with a fake mustache and a wig. A 50-year-old. And it's CEO like EO age. And then you go, and he goes, oh, what's it like working here? And you go, this place fucking sucks. <laughs> like, if you follow me, I'll teach you how to scam it. Yeah. We can take a couple of dollars out of the register. I charge lunch to them. Yep. And he's completely get sewered, of course. Yep. You only have to do the act once the cameras are there, though, by the way. Yeah. This isn't for any new co-worker. All right. Mountain bike fail. These kids are trying to plan a mountain that bike jump. That was literally perfect. Just keep your speed. You'll go right over. Okay. You'll be okay. You got it. You guys are trying to kill him. You got it. You're gonna, gonna be fine. You're gonna be okay. He is- has protection. Ready, He's got Carter? this. He's got it. It's all. It's easy money. You ready, Carter? Right. Full speed. Let's go, go. Carter. <laughs> Did not have it. Oh, you learned a lesson that day. A little punctured lung. <laughs> Did you not know. have it. Didn't even pedal. Yeah. Did not go the speed. He never had a chance. We could have told him he never had a chance. I know. And you know what? To be fair, when I was a little kid, I was the one saying, you got this. Yeah. No matter what. On the ramp, I'd say, hey, jump over. Hey, someone laid down in front of him. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's the kind of kid I was. Me um, too. I was never the jumper. I was always stirring it up with the ideas. Exactly. Oh, you can land that. Jump from here to here. <laughs> the confidence. All right. Last clip, Love with and Gold. The kid found the cookie hiding spot. Little climber. Climbs up the fridge, gets the cookies. Heist. Good heist. I Safely think, back down. I think the black fireman's pole. Yeah. I think the uh, black girl who had the list of racial slurs had a name for this girl, probably. Yeah. Like climber monkey. Cookie something. climber monkey. Yeah. Cookie so climber add that monkey. to your list. All right, well, that's the end of Uplifting Gold. It is Friday, so we are going to shout out America First Small Businesses and People. Uh, today, we're shouting out Erwin LaCour. He is an Instagram follower of mine. I follow him back as well. Uh, he's a show watcher, 
and he has really good content about breath work. Ooh. Are you familiar with breath work? I'm not. Breath work is like there's certain ways to breathe. Obviously, people probably heard of Wim Hof, but there's certain types of breathing uh, techniques that you can do that like lowers your anxiety and it gets your brain going smooth and kind of gets you out of your like, you know, uppity prey mentality and kind of gets you settled. And I've been following his content on Instagram and it's very interesting stuff. He actually holds two world records for longest static breath hold. Wow. And he's a show watcher. So like he's obviously got something going for him. That's like an impressive thing. Uh, He's got really cool stuff. Check him out. Learn about breathing techniques. It's actually really good for you guys. Um, He's linked in the description. Give him a follow. Tell him Fleck has sent you. He'll be happy to see you. Anything else before we get out of here? Nothing for me. Just make sure you guys join Bonus Land. we got a 30-minute bonus episode dropping right now, and we have really good... Uh, we I have, think it's a good episode, right? We good have bonus really land. good stuff this week for you Bonus Land. Can you give them a preview? Yeah. Um, someone's valuing a dog's life over a human life. California guy gets attacked at his house, and he shoots back. There's a white guy in Lagos teaching people how to grow plants. They need that. There's Mr. a Beast. lot. They have Mr. Beast Jr. That's uh, just a <laughs> little preview, but it's really good stuff. Fleckastalks.com is the website. Join today and join the Bonus Land community. Excuse me. All right. The end of the episode. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, homies. We'll see you Tuesday. Black people, the insurrection, racism.